Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to the University of Waterloo. Welcome to the Euclid session. My name is Fiona Dunbar, and I'm a lecturer here in the Faculty of Mathematics, and I also work in the Center for Education in Math, or the CEMC. So hopefully you guys are familiar with us. And we've participated in a math contest in the past. Great. So yes, you're familiar with the CEMC. You've probably visited our website at some point. Um, participated in a contest, maybe looked at some uh, previous contests on, online, which I'll encourage um, you to do to as well after today's session. So uh, part of my job is I teach in the Faculty of Math, so um, quite possibly I might be one of your uh, professors in September. Um, so I teach in the Faculty of Math, and I also do outreach activities for the Faculty of Math. So visiting high schools, talking about applications of mathematics, um, talking about mathematics, competitions that you get involved with, and um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, today, what we're going to do is I'm going to give you sort of an overview of what to expect on the, the Euclid contest, why would you want to write it, some tips for writing the contest, and then we'll actually do some maths. So I hope you can product yourself, and we will even make a appearance here if you see some math. You're not just sitting there and listening, you guys. Come on, you're applying to math, by the way. We all like math in here, right? Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to do some math today. So, these will be um, basically previous Euclid uh, contest kind of questions. So, you can get a feel for it. I'll try and give you some tips for uh, for answering Euclid kind of problems. And then, uh, maybe at the end, we'll have a little bit of time for the questions. So, let's see how we can this. The sleep setting is obviously a little too intense here. Press this. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's me. Where's the website? Here we go. So, the Euclid contest is written uh, in April, April 15th this year. It's actually written by students all around, uh, all around the world. So, we'll actually, we kind of compete with students from all over. But that's the date of the contest this year. I believe registration closes this week. So, uh, if you haven't already registered for it, just make sure you talk to your to your math teacher at school because the contest is actually written in your in your school. And I'll talk about that. Today. The contest itself is two and a half hours long. It takes two and a half hours to write, and the contest is made up of short answer and full solution type problems. For the short answer problem, typically it, we give you a mark out of three, and all we need to provide is the short answer. So if you're right, you get three marks. If you're wrong and you just put the answer into the wrong answer, it's going to be a zero. So my first tip is even in the short answer problems, show some work. We give you a booklet to, to actually write the, the contest in, so you will have space there to show some work. And I'd encourage you, even if it is just a short answer problem, show your work. That way, if you do make some tiny little mistake, we can see, oh, they knew what they were doing, let's give them two out of three. If you just put an incorrect answer down for the short answer is just going to be zero. So one little thing to keep in mind, that's kind of a way to, to boost your score. Sometimes it happens in a competition kind of test kind of atmosphere. Sometimes we are making a little mistake, so good idea to try to at least get some marks there for what you've done. The contest itself is out of 100 marks. Really typical. Average, maybe not so typical. Um, average is normally between 45 and 50. So, bring your expectations down a little bit. If you're used to getting 90s in your math class, very few people get 90s on the Euclid Math Contest. We aim for this contest to be written by anyone who wants to. If you've written a contest before, you kind of you know it starts off easy, right? Number one, two, three. Same thing with the, the Euclid. It'll start out quite simple. I'm actually on the Euclid committee, and when we try to come up with the number one, we try to come up with an easy problem, and we say, let's make it a tad easier. We really want number one. We want to make sure that everyone has a chance at writing this contest. But of course, it's going to get progressively more difficult. So as you're getting into question nine and ten, certainly the parts B and C of those questions, it's going to be very, very challenging. You actually are allowed to use a calculator. But um, we do require that that calculator is a casino calculator on your iPhone. We don't want you to be using something that has internet access, basically. So don't bring in an iPhone or an iPad or any kind of smartphone into the contest. We can bring a 
that are complicated. So as I mentioned before, the contest itself, you don't have to go to any special you know, center to write the contest. It's written in your school. So uh, if, you, if your school hasn't registered for the contest, talk to them this week. You probably have if you participated in a contest before. Um, but generally, so much we will be writing uh, together at the exact same time on that same date of uh, April 15th this year. So here's the, the cover page of the contest. So just a couple things I want to point out to you. This is last year's contest. I'm going to show you this year's contest. Um, the light bulb there and the little handwriting. So that's how you tell if the question is going to be a short answer versus a full solution. Look out for the light bulb. That's the short answer. We're you know, typically three marks. And again, we all know now we're going to show our work anyways, just in case we make a mistake. And then the handwriting on paper means Full solution. So there, we really are looking for a well-written, concise uh, solution. So, here's what a question might look like. This is actually another one. I believe this is from last year. So hopefully, we can handle number one. So you notice there are one A and one B. They're going to be worth three marks each. If you're really confident and you want to say, "I'm sure," you can just put that solution. Maybe for the one A, you're okay. Um, but certainly in part C, C is going to be worth four marks here for a well-presented solution. This, you can get this on, uh, online, as I said, this is just last year's contest. Here's a uh, problem two as well, so again, short answer, short answer, full solution. Three marks, three marks, four marks. I'll talk about sort of some of the standard topics you can expect on that. So are you finished? Okay, so why could we write the Euclid contest? So, first and foremost, you guys are here, you're at the University of Waterloo for, for math for the challenge, right? We'd we like to be challenged. That's part of the fun of, of mathematics. It allows us to, to ponder something, to think about something for a while, and we feel really good when we come up with the, the right solution. So that's sort of the first reason. Parents might care about this one a little more um, to help earn a scholarship to Waterloo Math. So that's one of the other things about the Euclid do use it for admissions to the Faculty of Math as well as for, uh, for scholarships. Because this question is often asked, what if I do really poorly on the Euclid and you guys will say we're not going to accept you? It cannot hurt your chances. It can only help you by writing. Like we said, we know the average is between 45 and 50. So we're not going to um, we're not going to not admit you if you get a 40 in a contest or something. That's not the purpose of it. it we can only help you by I write the so we want you guys to, to participate in this. It's a good way to help prepare yourself for first year studies in mathematics to sort of brush up on a lot of the that high school curriculum, even some topics that maybe you, uh, you've been studying so much calculus you kind of forget to list some of those properties of triangles and it kind of brush you up on the whole kind of range or the whole spectrum of mathematics that you've studied in over your high school. And it's a competition, so you can kind of see how you stack up against your friends, against people in your, um, in your district, in Canada, around the world, and how to sort of see where you're at. It's a real eye-opener when you come to Waterloo anyways as a, a math student. You might have been the top kid in your school, you come here and all of a sudden there's a bunch of people who are the top kid in their, their school. So you can, here's a little preview, see where you kind of line up. And just have fun. Like I said, in this room, we all like math, so it is a pretty fun contest. The, the questions, a lot of work and time goes into preparing these questions, so they're not going to be your typical kind of textbook sort of problem. Like I said, a lot of thought and preparation goes into making the, the questions, so they are kind of fun uh, problems to do. So how to prepare. Probably similarly to how you might have prepared in the past for some of the other contests you've done. Working through old contests on our website, so I think we have contests since 1997, if I'm not mistaken. So we have the contest to look at. We also have the full solutions. Um, we have a, a Euclid e-workshop on our website as well, which just kind of brushes you up on some of the specific areas that are you know, uh, tested on the contest. Um, so we do have a, a math resource manual. I believe it's 
There's something at right over the side, actually. And some other CEMC problem solving books that you can take a look at on our website. Just to teach you some of those uh, different kinds of techniques, because like I said, um, although the material you should have learned at some point, there may be kind of tweaks to questions a little bit uh, different than what you might have been taught in high school, so you might want to, to read up on some of these different kinds of solutions. Working with friends at school, um, we see this all the time even here at the university when you're sort of collaborating with someone else or working with someone else on a problem. You can kind of come at it from a, a different way by working with someone else who just kind of sees the problem slightly differently. So if you have a friend who's also participating in the contest, I encourage you to study together. If you are going through some of the old um, contests on the website, try the question first. Don't just read the solution. Um, some people are extremely lucky and can just absorb things by reading. For most of us, I think we learn by doing, so by trying the problem first to really make sure you have an understanding of the problem, really get stuck, then of course uh, take a look at the solutions. So here are some of the standard topics that you can expect on Euclid contests. So definitely brush up on some of these properties. So geometry, trigonometry, exponents of logarithms, systems of equations, sequences, and number theory. So these are almost like a checklist of kind of questions that you need to come up with. Another one that's not there. Uh, probability is another one that can often pop up on a Euclid contest. Okay, so set your expectations. Like I said, you may not do quite as well on this as you do in a, a typical math test, but so decide what you sort of be happy with going in. Remember that it can only help your application, and it's just a, a good opportunity to kind of challenge yourself and do some problem solving. On the contest itself, so when you're writing it, start with the problems that you know how to do. Um, this is probably a good step for writing tests in general. Write better solutions to fewer problems instead of worse solutions to more problems. I don't know if we put this here just as a marker because we really don't want to read terrible solutions to a whole bunch of problems, but it's probably in your, your best interest as well. Write up a nice solution. This is something you're looking for, particularly, like I said, in those full solution contests. We're looking for a nice write-up of a a solution. So take your time to write those solutions quite well. So I did mention that the contest gets progressively harder. So by question 9 or 10, you may be saying to yourself right now, I'm not even going to try number 10. Don't say that to yourself. Because particularly with 9A and 10A, we, we write them specifically so that everyone should be able to have a fair chance at trying them. So please try 9A and 10A. The way that question 9 and 10 often work is there are sort of three parts to an idea of a problem. So the nice thing is if you do 9A, there probably is a good chance you can do it. It gives you an understanding of the problem as a whole. You might even be able to figure out how to do 9B. So don't just avoid the last two questions because you feel like you're going to be too hard. The truth is the first part of each, you, can, you have a really good shot at doing it. And as I said, it might even just help you understand the problem even more to, to give an attempt to uh, the next part of the question. That's what I just said. Okay, so what are we going to do? So I think now we'll, I'll have my lovely assistant hand out these, um, these packages. So here's what we're going to do for that. And we're going to hand them out. I think we should have enough for everyone. So even the parents here can brush up on their Okay, so there are more questions than we will have time to get through today. So we're going to kind of touch upon a part of uh, each of the questions that we have to, to start with. So I'm going to choose one of the problems to ask you guys to look at. I'm going to, I'm going to give you some time to try it, and then I'm going to show you the solution. I'm not going to give you enough time to solve a problem. You just don't have enough time here today. So I want you to think about how you would start the problem. Even if you don't have time to write out all the details. So think about how you would attack it. When I show you the solutions, think about the high-level strategy of what I'm 
So I mean, you don't have to worry about all the nitty gritty details. When you go home and take a look at the package plan, you can figure out all those little intricacies. I'm going to show you one way of doing the problem, but the nice thing about math content problems in general, you probably know this, there's often more than one way to do it. So just because I show you one way, it doesn't mean there isn't another um, great way to write it as well. 